What's going on everybody? Welcome back. We are here again. Filmstruck Film Club. I'm glad you're here. First time? Maybe. I don't know. But if you've been here before, welcome back. It's me, Carson Higgins. I'm here with my buddy, Always. I'm here with my... It's not his name. His name's not Always. His name's Groot. Maybe you know. I don't know. Uh, but we, we watched another great film this week. We watched something uh, by a director that we have watched uh, one or two of his films in this club. Uh, someone who I, I just deeply love and admire, and I'm so glad that we watched uh, his very first film. But we watched this week Jacques Demy's Lola. And this movie is, is just chef's kiss. Uh, perhaps you have the Criterion channel, perhaps you don't. But if you do, maybe you're familiar with a, an ongoing series they do over there called Adventures in Movie Going where somebody cool will sit down and tell you about a bunch of Criterion movies that they love, and they'll sit with someone and talk about it. Ethan Hawke, who you should know, um, recently did an episode of Adventures in Movie Going, and he talked about this film, Lola. He said that, that everyone always loves to, and, and I'm, I'm guilty of this as well, but everyone always loves to sh shower love upon Umbrellas of Cherbourg and Young Girls of Rochefort, Jacques Demy's famous uh, French musicals, uh, that were collaborations with Michelle Legrand, uh, and they are fantastic. We watched them here. In fact, I own the guy's whole box set right here, which is where I pulled Lola right out from last night and threw it in here. Like I said already, it's his debut feature film. It's a black and white 1961 uh, film about a woman who is a single mother and a burlesque dancer. Maybe, forgive me if I'm misusing burlesque here, but... Uh, she is a dancer, and uh, she once upon a time fell in love with a sailor who gave her this baby and has been gone for seven years. Uh, there is a, a, a like kind of a wonderful thing that is now consistent in all three of Jacques Demy's films that I've watched, which is this like just perfectly missed opportunities of romance. Uh, we do have let me let me get his name correct here. Uh, his name is Roland. Roland is a guy who is not not really loving his life so much. He's he's kind of tremendously bored. Uh, but he uh, meets this young girl who reminds him of a girl that he knew when he was about ten, who he has been in love with ever since. Uh, he happens to bump into her that same day, and who is it? Our lead character Lola, who is played beautifully by Anouk Ami. Uh, she's just stunning in this movie. I mean, she she's very alive and free, and uh, she just has a, this wonderful sense of, of whimsy about her. Uh, and and this film does a really cool thing where we we set up eventually that uh, she is pining for the sailor who is not returning, uh, but she also remembers Roland, and they did have this fond childhood sort of like bonding friendship that led to a crush a little bit so so them meeting up now is is kind of you know serendipitous however uh she's also kind of in the middle of a fling with another um, uh, american soldier i guess forgive me the first guy that she was in love with not american french uh but now she's with this like american sailor guy who uh per description kind of is like the guy michelle that she was in love with once upon a time uh, so there's this great thing happening where the the little girl that I mentioned that Roland was like you remind me of this girl that I was into and I was and which is not as weird as I'm making it sound, um, but it's like every character, every supporting character around kind of the main two is like mirroring these characters like it's it's the same blonde sailor it's the same her name is Celine but she goes by Lola. Uh, and then our young girl Celine winds up sort of at the fair and having a wonderful day with this same blonde sailor that Lola's been with. And so we're just, it's almost like we're witnessing a flashback, but it's, it's of these new characters. So it's just like kind of a very cleverly put together romance. There's also right at the beginning of the film, boom, Lola comes on the screen and then seemingly something about Max Ulfus who is a director that I'm not very familiar with. I apologize. I'm very eager to get some Max Office films here going in the club. But uh, Jacques Demy wanted to kind of make a tribute to Max Office. So from what I understand, uh, the way that some of these long shots are composed, the way that some of the crane booming of the camera and things, sweeping camera moves, 
are, are like a little tip of the hat to Max Olfus, who, uh, if you listen to directors talk about some of their favorite directors, chances are they're going to bring up this guy. Um, I, I can't get much further in this without talking about probably the most important figure and why we even get to watch this movie at all in 2022. And that is because of Jacques Demy's lifelong partner, uh, Agnes Varda, who is another director who is just such a gem uh, of the world. I'm so sad that she's gone. But uh, anytime that I get to see her talk, uh, I'm always just like warmed right up. And she, even after Jacques passed in 1990 or 91, she really led the charge of making sure that his legacy was preserved and not forgotten. And uh, so Lola was a film that was lost for like quite a bit of time. Uh, and Agnes went kind of around the world looking for a, a copy of this film that was usable enough to, to make a new negative. And so this film was restored and re-released in 2012, which was only 10 years ago. So up until 2012, this was probably a very difficult movie to see. Uh, but luckily... You know, we're, we're living in the age of the, of the Film Foundation and, and the Criterion Collection and all the preservation that they're doing of all these wonderful films and making sure that you and I get to watch them. And I'm so glad that, that Jacques Demy's debut feature film is not lost to history and that we get to enjoy it because it is a beautiful, very enjoyable movie and uh, takes place in his hometown of, I, I'm going to probably say this wrong, Nantes. It's like a southwestern French beach town. Um, and it's used beautifully in this in this film. You really kind of get a, a nice tour of the place. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, like I mentioned his name already, but when I think of Jacques Demy, I almost immediately think of Michel Legrand. And so his music being present here and, and having it be their first collaboration uh, is just great. Uh, also, got to give it up to the producer of this movie, believe it or not, <coughs> Georges de Beauregard. Thank God for that guy, because without him, we probably would never have seen the French New Wave. He produced Godard's films, Truffaut's films. Uh, speaking of those cats, uh, the DP of this movie, Lola, Raoul Cotard. Man, I wish I spoke French and I could say all this stuff perfectly. Uh, he's very much responsible for, like, the look of the French New Wave. I mean, he shot eight... Uh, what is it? He, he shot... Uh, Breathless. He shot Jules and Jim. He shot uh, Shoot the Piano Player. He's like he shot so many of these uh, French New Wave films that it's um, it's he's he's almost like the the piece that is shared amongst all of these uh, films and these filmmakers. Uh, so yeah, I I mean I don't even know what else to say. It, it, Jacques Demy himself describes this film as a musical without music, which I then found out a little bit more in the world of Jacques Demy, which is a, a documentary made by Agnes. Uh, that you gotta watch. But in it, he was talking about how Lola was originally meant to be in color with, as a musical with big dance numbers and it was gonna cost like 250 million francs or something like that. And this George de Beauregard guy was like, yeah, that's that's cool and all, but uh, Godard made Breathless for like 32 million. So maybe if you make it, you know, 35 million and cut all that other shit, like we'll make this movie. And uh, so Jacques said, all right, fine. He shot it in black and white. It revolves pretty much around five characters, and though there is no musical number per se, uh, Lola does sing this great little song uh, where she talks about, it's me, Lola. Um, but that's kind of the only like quote unquote song in, in the film. Uh, but even though that's the case, the rest of it does kind of carry itself like it has the the lightness of, of a musical. Not to say that that the the heartbreak and the romance and stuff isn't, isn't very much a, uh, a palpable feeling uh but that's also something that comes with musicals man they're not all just like i don't know anywho uh big fan of this movie really glad i got to sit down and watch it uh i'm totally in love with anouk ami and you probably will too you've also probably seen her before she was in la dolce vita and eight and a half and stuff so she's she's a somebody uh but yeah I, I don't really have anything else to say other than i'm so glad we watched this movie i've been looking forward to it like i mentioned before i got this box set and so i was like i gotta watch more of jacques films and so here we are uh i'm glad you joined us hopefully you enjoyed it as well let me know what you thought about it go ahead and follow us at filmstruck film club and you can you can chat with me i'm very much available for these kind of things i love talking about movies as you can see per all these freaking videos of me talking <laughs> about movies so 
uh, yeah, hit me up and uh, be on the lookout for another film. We're going to pick another one tomorrow. And uh, yeah, spring has sprung, baby. So get outside during the day, but then at night, watch something awesome like Lola. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, say goodbye, Groot. He said I am Groot, but whatever. <laughs>